Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And you know what, Nate? I, I really don't appreciate how hype you are right now. Because I, I know why you're a little excited right now, Nate. I, I don't really appreciate it, man. Hey, I'm just excited that you are here and you are on air because you are ta- – this is what gets me. You are so uh, up with the d- latest technology, but he's always uh-huh. the last to get on the podcast. You're right. You're right. I've been having some technical errors as of late trying to get on this podcast, y'all. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead – Pop this. We don't have a drink sponsor yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop this drink real quick, man, right. because I feel like I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to wet my whistle before we, before we get into this conversation today. Because I just know you're gonna come with some heat that I really don't no, want to no, hear. No, I'm not. But he has a rant about some of his technology. See, I, I'm mm. a, I'm an old school guy. You know, I got gasoline yeah. cars and diesel cars, but Mr. Oh, you want to take the conversation there, Mister? You want to take the conversation plug there, it in, guy? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, all right. Well, well, since since Big Nate Dog took the conversation there, let me help y'all understand exactly what right now. Okay, I'm a little, I'm a little angry right now. Okay, mm-hmm. and the reason why I'm a little angry is because governor abbott here we're here in texas in the big state of texas big nate dog yes, governor sir. abbott you know it's a big oil country right. oil oil's big business right matter of fact i was in midland texas yesterday doing an event with the nfl and fuel up to play 60 and dairy max and all that jazz right it was all good stuff yes, right for the yes. kids and midland texas is right there in west texas it's oil country that's all country. Right? That's we know big boom country big boom oil country right. matter of fact my driver who was taking me to the event said 90% of the business in Midland, Texas is all oil. I said, mm. whew, that's a lot of bread. Right. Okay? But I have nothing wrong with oil. I have nothing wrong with gasoline vehicles. I have nothing wrong with combustion, none of those things. But I do understand that the world, okay, the globe, it, there's only so many resources. That's right. And some, and some resources are not renewable. That's right. Dog, that's right. Which means that, and if it's not renewable, that means that there's an expiration. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, there's a, much, much like our careers. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right. We 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 used to be we used to be fine killing machines yes, back sir. in the day. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Specimens of life. That's we right. We weren't born. We were created. Nate, That's would right. you say that? That's right. We were created okay. to do what we do. Yes. Exactly. But but at some point in time, when we go back to that pot of gold, Nate, it ain't there. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone, Nate. Right? So yeah. we gotta find. So we gotta find another direction. So now you and I sit with headphones on our head, microphones in front of our face, and this is our new direction. Yes. Okay, this is our new our new life. Right. Much like I feel, I feel the same way with gasoline vehicles. I love gasoline vehicles. Okay. They're awesome. They do they do amazing things. But eventually, we have to find another resource and another way to go in order to be able to get from point A to point B. And I feel as if that is going to be an electric vehicle space. And you know. I'm a big EV head. That's right. You are. You 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 do it all like head. that. See, and on and on the opposite end, much like you're on the opposite end of this camera, you're a big <laughs> diesel dude. That's right. Everything I got is diesel, truck and car. Yes, sir. Truck, car, van. It don't matter. Everything. Yeah, that's roll with don't the matter. diesel, baby. Why why are you like diesel versus regular gasoline? Because any vehicle that can 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 maintain diesel, uh, it can pull anything. It can move anything. It goes a little bit farther. It's a little bit tough. It's a little bit durable, okay. more durable than a gasoline car. I mean, if you get 100,000 miles in a gasoline car over a period of time, you'll get 200, 300,000 miles in, right. a diesel, in a diesel vehicle because they just have to be built a little bit more sturdier. That's me. I looked at myself at Alvin Salon. I was a diesel. See, you was a little gas power uh, Maserati, but I was a diesel that, truck. That, yeah, that's right, Nate. No, I had that EV. I had that that that, that zero to sixty in one point nine, baby. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. Or so by now, zero to forty. 
But huh? now you're an electric guy. I mean, what? It, I'm yeah. all electric now. I'm team electric now. My, my wife still drives a big boy 5.7 liter uh, truck, you know, right. but I drive I drive an electric vehicle. You know, I'm a Tesla guy myself, right. but I'll drive any electric car that wants to sponsor us right now. So y'all holler at your boy. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm a big time EV guy, but I do like my diesels, okay? Um, but most likely going forward, I'm probably going to be all EV. Wow. With that said, here in Texas, Nate, being that it's oil country, being that the number one EV brain in the world, mm. Elon Musk, is now re- operating out of Austin, Texas, you would think that him and Governor Abbott would have some have some nice little handshakes, wouldn't that's you? Right. I, oh, yeah, they should. Big business meeting right. politics, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, Nate. Big money going underneath the table, how all yeah. that stuff goes. We stay out of that stuff. But. Governor Abbott doesn't like the fact that there's so many EVs now, even though he made the deal for Tesla to come here. He doesn't like the fact that these EVs are coming in and taking away from the pot of gold that is of the oil industry, meaning that gasoline combustion engines. People like me buying electric vehicles are no longer buying gas every single day. And that is taking away from 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 the GDP, obviously, here in Texas. So with that said. Governor Abbott is imposing a $400 a year EV tax. Wow. For real? Yeah, for real. So, I mean, wow. That's, that, that's, that's a lot of that's a lot of jack, man. That's, that's a lot of name. jack. I mean, you know, you know you may look at one person, but is this per car or just per, per. household? Her per vehicle. Wow. So now just to drive a vehicle that as of right now, as long as I'm driving the vehicle, it's good for it's good for our our, our, our globe, right? right? It's good for the world, right. it's good for right. the uh the for, economy, for, for yeah. our environment, okay? Mm-hmm. Now when we start to talk about recycling batteries and all that stuff, that's a whole nother conversation, but we haven't got to that point yet. But right now, with me just driving an electric vehicle, we know that it is good for our environment. Right. And now I have to pay taxes. Wow. I gotta pay taxes because I'm not buying gas. And this per vehicle. Per vehicle. Wow. I'm looking at it right now, Nate. Wow. Senate Bill 505 requires electric vehicle owners to pay $400 to register a new electric vehicle on top of other fees. Renewing your registration will cost $200. Wow, man. Mm, mm, Senate mm. Bill 505. That's $600 a year. You can go buy plenty of things for $600. I don't like it, Nate. I uh, don't like it, man. I don't, I don't know, man. You got to go up there with the big legislation, man, and, and, and put your put your two cent in, man. Stand on the floor. Oh, I got up there. I'm not. I'm not messing with that stuff. People like me disappear when you go start talking about mess with <laughs> politics, Nate. <laughs> I ain't go fool with it. Right. My family needs me. We, we, I don't need that drama. Okay. I don't need that drama. But uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get the elephant out the room, Nate. Get the elephant out the okay. room. You know, I rep my city. That's I right. I rep my city, Seattle, Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> Second year in the NHL. Yes, they are. Went ahead, took care of business, knocked out the Colorado Avalanche, the defending Stanley Cup champions wow. in seven game series. Bow, 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 bow. Knocked them out. <laughs> bow, okay. bow, four bow, games. Bow, huh? yeah. yeah, four out of seven. We took care of business. Then we had to fly straight down to D Town Boogie and go head to head with the Dallas Stars with all the pretty boy Floyds they got on their team. Okay. All right. We got they got they got Tyler Sagans and the Benz and all them jokers, okay? They went game seven again. Wow. And they they dropped the ball, Nate. What happened? What, explain My, to me what happened. They had opportunities, Nate. That's all we can ask for as athletes to have opportunities right, to win a ball right. game. And, and the Seattle Kraken took Dallas to seven games. Nobody thought it would happen. Wow. But they went seven games with them, fought hard, played hard, all that jazz. But when they had their opportunities to seal their fate, they missed the opportunity. The window of opportunity closed, Nate. Wow. So, so, so where, did, where stars, does this put y'all, man? Where does this put y'all? I mean, we're done. as we're an organization, playoffs, no, no, no. I know the, is the playoffs over, but what does this, okay. does this take y'all? Is the expectations mm. the same next year? Is it is oh, it no, something? Nate, bigger? We got respect, Nate. We got respect. We was the new kids on the block. All right, all right as we used to say in football, we got new booty. Right, There's new booty out here. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. this Seattle Kraken was the new booty. <laughs> right, all right, and and they came out here and they earned. We always talk about earning respect. Right, they. They earn the respect of everybody. Right. Everybody. There's three R's in everybody, in case right. y'all didn't know. There's no V. Right. Ebonic, uh, or Ebonic curriculum right there. All right, it's everybody. Right, okay? right. They, they, <laughs> That's pretty they good. They earn the respect of That's everybody in NHL. So now I think 
people were were. I know I have friends that were played in that were professional NHL athletes, professional hockey athletes, and they said before nobody wants to go up to Seattle and play. It's a joke up there. It's that uh, it's too far. I think it's changed now. Right. I think it's changed. I think this team, the way they came out and competed in the playoffs, has earned the respect not only in the entire league, but earned the respect of the players in the league. And now more primetime players might be opt to sign free agent deals up there wow. coming this next season. So I think Seattle is going to be a team to be reckoned with going forward. They have their core players. They have their care. They have identity as an organization. And I think now there's going to be more people that want to be a part of that going forward. You know, it's just uh, amazing, man. I, I, I love you to death because, I mean, you would rep anything out of Seattle. And, and it don't matter if it's hopscotch, <laughs> uh, you know, hockey, it don't matter, man. You try to be on top of it and you and you have knowledge. And so, but, but I ain't loving it like that. I'm from Florida and I think we I got know. a hockey team and I don't even know the name. I think what the Panthers or somebody, <laughs> I don't even know the name of these cats. Hey, yeah. hey, you know what? Hey, what's your name? Florida now. Florida has a good team. Yeah. Nate. Well, Florida's kicking butt right now. Nah, I hope they do. They're kicking butt right now. Bucks. Yeah, you talking about the Tampa? No. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about the Miami let me, Heat? Let me, <laughs> let me pull this up. Now, now, speaking on how I rep Seattle, Nate, uh -huh. I find myself in a little bit of a quandary, yeah. a little bit of a dilemma right now. As we talk about the some one of our employers in, in that of the Dallas Cowboys, former employees and now current employer, uh, you and I both work for the Dallas Cowboys in the, in the media side of things. Right. Dallas has to play the Seattle Seahawks, not only in the preseason, Nate Dog. Yes. But also in the regular season. Double dip. We going to double, double dip. Double dip. Yeah. Dip. Dip. Yeah, yeah. We going to go to y'all during the preseason. That's the good thing. But guess who That's comes good to thing. us during the regular Ooh. season? So I get a free trip home, Nate, because I most likely will be calling that ball game back at back home in the right, preseason. Right. If, if, if I still have the opportunities I had last year, I'll be doing color commentary for the Cowboys in the preseason. But let's talk about this schedule release, Nate. Since since we since we last spoke, the schedule has came out before the Dallas Cowboys and obviously for the rest of the NFL. But we're talking the D-Town Boogie here. What are some of the things that you see on this schedule? As a matter of fact, let me run through the schedule, okay, Nate? Mm. Preseason, Jaguars. Giants and La whatever. No, I'm, I'm off. I'm off. Jacksonville, yeah, Seattle, go. Las Vegas. Jacksonville, yep. Seattle, Las Vegas. Okay. Then you get to the regular season, and you get to you got the Giants. All right. Let's just talk about an out of out of division because right. we know about who we're going to play during division. We got the Jets. Yes, uh, September seventeenth. Okay, Mark it down. Mm hmm. That's going to be a big game. Right. A, a Ron. The what you call him? Hey, John Wick. John Wick Doesn't is matter somewhere what jersey else. He wearing, huh? Yeah, John Wick. <laughs> wow. All right, so you got the Jets, you got the Cardinals, which is uh, it's probably one of the only two games that they have on their schedule that are easy, should be easy, based upon uh, their current rosters. Right. Then you got the Patriots, Nate, dog. Mm, and I don't Patriots know how to take schedule. them. I don't know how to take them, but go ahead on. You know they're always going to be tough. Right. Then you got your, your gorillas down there in San Francisco. Mm. In San Francisco. Yes. Then back then you to got back, the Chargers. Back to back, yeah. we'll be on the road. The Chargers, yeah, San Francisco, the then the Chargers. Kellum, the Kellum Moors. The Kellum Moors. So you got the Chargers. You have the Rams. You have the Panthers, the Seahawks, the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, the Detroit back to Lions. Back once again on the road. Jeez. When you call yourself a uh, primetime uh, team like we are, we're on the road. This is going to be in December, back to back. One week freezing cold in Buffalo. The next week, December 24th, Christmas, Christmas Eve, we'll be in Miami, burning hot. So, yes. Nate, don't. Then we got um, Detroit. This is a, They've closed this it is out. It's a tough schedule, man. Yeah. Who 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 are the who are the weak links? Because things can change when the season starts. Who who are you looking at as the weak links? You know, in this. I think there's only two games on there, Nate, that you can look at, look at and say, you know what, we should handle these guys without any issues, and that is the Arizona Cardinals and the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals, I think they're uh, dismantled right now. Obviously, they're still trying to right. figure out who they are as an organization. Mm -hmm. And you looked at the Los Angeles Rams; they totally just dismembered their team. Yes, they so, did. Only person they still have there is Stafford and, and Aaron Donald. So other than that, they got rid of absolutely everybody. 
on their roster. And they're in a rebuild. And I don't think that they even have high expectations for themselves. They know over the next three to four years, they they pretty much they sacrifice. They put all the cards in for that one Super Bowl. And I can't be mad at them. They got that's your goal every year, but now they find themselves in a situation where they have to rebuild their roster. So But you know, they got the, a they got a management team that knows how to build. You know, right. they knows how to they they got they, they you know, they not this year, but the next year, twenty five, they're gonna be on and popping with draft choices. And uh Aaron Donald will be a little long in the tooth, and the quarterback will be way past the tooth, you know. So his tooth, you know, fell out. But uh, <laughs> so, so when so when you look at this roster, Nate, dog, how would you how would you rate the difficulty of this of this not this roster but this schedule? How would you rate the difficulty of this season? Because this last season, I feel like Dallas on paper had one of the easier schedules. Ain't nothing easy this year. I, I, the East, the NFC East, got to be one of the top three di- yep. divisions easy and you know we went through all the guys that uh we don't normally play but you gotta understand we're opening up on september 10th versus the new york giants they just paid danny dimes they just got him a receiver in there they re-signed a couple of the defensive linemen so everybody's intact the only person is the running back, Barkley, who's uh, a little uh, – you don't know where he's staying right now, but he's a, ball, he's a ball player. So I figure when they crank up at September 10th, he'll be there. Okay. And you told me this last year, Isaiah, and uh, it has been so spot on. Don't fear their players. Fear the coaches. They, they are the type of coaches is if, if they can get you in the game and they can get you to the fourth quarter, it was within seven points, they have a great chance of winning. So the Cowboys is going to have a dog fight come September 10th against the New York Giants. That's going to be a hell, of a, a hell of a deal. And this is a must win, I think, for the Cowboys to get their season off right. Now, let, me, let me ask you this question, Nate. Can you remember, somebody asked me the question the other day, you know, do you remember a time where you had a really tough schedule um, at the schedule release, and I honestly can't remember because I looked at, I looked at the schedule every year the same. Mm. Like it just didn't matter. Every team that popped up, our job was to knock them down. You talking about when we played? Now, obviously, you talking about when we played? Yeah, when we played. Yeah. You know what? I, I didn't look at Michael Irvin and, and Emmett and and Dion. The music be can look at the schedule, but me, to me. I had so many Bulldogs I was playing against and Hall of Famers. I didn't know there's Hall of Famers then, but I know they now. Uh, I I was like, every week was going to be a dog fight for me. So I I, I didn't look at wins and losses. I looked at the people I was battling against. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I mean, so so how do you feel when you look at this for for Dallas, right? When you look at Dallas's schedule and you see these opponents that you typically don't face, okay? We're talking about the, the Jets. You talk about the Panthers, the Jets, yeah. the Patriots, the the you know, the 49ers that we've seen them a few times over the past years. We saw Seattle. You know, we saw the Chargers last year, but yeah, you got Seattle, you got Buffalo, Miami, Detroit. Like who did who did Double J piss off, Nate, that they gave him that December? Uh, you know, uh I don't know, but you got to understand from Thanksgiving, facing the Washington Commanders through Seattle all the way to the end of the season with Washington. That ain't no joke because you got Washington, Seattle, who's got a devastating run game. Uh, Philadelphia, who's got a devastating defense and and getting bigger. And Buffalo, uh, if they quarterback ever learn that his arm is more dangerous than his legs, he's going to be unstoppable. And uh, Miami, all they got to do is their quarterback just be stable. They got a team. Their quarterback just has to be stable. Uh, In Detroit, they up and coming. They may not have the talent as the guys that I've just mentioned, but they got a coach and a belief system in place that they can't be beat. And uh, Washington, they just got a defense. And I'm telling you, is it young? He mad. They didn't give him his fifth year. He, He is trying to play out his last year because he won't be with Washington next year. Because they can't keep playing every defensive player. So he won't be with Washington next year. So he's going to be on display 17 times next year, this coming season. When I look at the last part, when, I know everybody always wants to know, what's the toughest run that the, the Cowboys are going to have, you know, during the season? And I look at this schedule and I say the last doggone One, month. One, two, three, four, five. the last six games. Last From six Seattle games. Straight, all no the chasing. way to Philadelphia. 
through Washington. Jeez. I mean, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be. I hate to use it's gonna be hell. I hate to reuse that word. <laughs> it's gonna be hell. <laughs> I'm telling hey, you, tell the people when you when you look at these opponents and you know the physicality of these organizations that you're going to be going, going up against back to back to back. What can you expect? Tell people from a player's perspective, what is their bodies going to be going through from from Washington to Seattle to Philly to Buffalo to Miami to Detroit? You you know. The way the way I used to get ready for runs like this is and I'm just being honest with you. I, the parting would be over. You know, for us, me getting out, you know, I was a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday type guy, Friday, <laughs> you know, getting out there, having fun, you know, doing my thing. But, man, uh-uh, I'll be uh, I'll be very low key them, them last six weeks because we would always be in position because we would be fighting for home field advantage. When I played – with this schedule, that means we we had a successful last season. So now when I look at these last four, five, six games, I'm going to curtail what I do off the field so I can be very, very effective on the field. I'm going to be whirlpooling. Back then, we didn't have a crowd chamber and all that. It was an ice whirlpool, <laughs> go to the big pool. world, the big heated whirlpool, then go back to the – and I would make sure my body – would be right because this would be the home stretch that was going to determine whether you'd be traveling them first few weeks Cheating. or whether Correct. you got everybody coming to you to, through the whole playoffs. And that's what we were seeking. So what are some of the things that are going through these players' heads right now that they understand what their season is going to look like from a competitive standpoint? Uh, yeah. What, what are, like Just from the average citizen, they don't know, right? They see this, they're like, oh, there's some tough games, but, you know, Dallas Cowboys, you know, we're much better than this team on this side. Nah. And, like. No. Cut all that out. What is your what is your mindset as a player, Nate, when you look at this schedule and you're going through OTAs right now and you're ramping up, getting ready to go to mini camps and then you have a break and then you go to camp? What is your does your mindset change based upon your schedule? <clears throat> not not for these young guys, not until the season start, not until the Giants hit them in the mouth. And then and then they have to get really re, get ready real quick for, for these for the uh, for these Jets because they got a defense. That, that coach over there has put together defense. That's when they're going to realize how physical New York is, how physical the Jets is. That's when it's going to dawn them when the season starts. And they can't lose the first two games. They can't lose two of these first two. They can't lose those games back to back. That's going to throw their season into a tailspin. They're going to have to win one of these games. They're going to have to win one of these games. I promise you, their mindset going to change. The rookies – they finna see speed like they ain't never seen before. They finna see schemes like they ain't never seen before. The tight end, screw, scooter maker or shooter maker. Scooter maker, yeah. Yeah, he, he finna feel physical like he never <laughs> he felt before. Uh, Maserati, you, you better crank it up. You better either plug in, you better either plug in like your boy Isaiah plug in, or you better get some <laughs> diesel up in you, bro, because mass That's movement right. coming. You know, that's right. Yeah. So. All right. So if, if, if you had to put your finger, Nate, on two games that you must have, I know that's hard to do right now. Obviously, it's you going to must depend on records have at that New time. York. I get it. You must beat the Giants. Do not lose to the Giants. Week one. Week one. That is so Week that one. is so huge because the hype, the hype, you going to New York. Then next week, New York coming to you again in the form of the Jets. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. This dude is this dude is gonna show the world. This dude has never been as accommodating as he been for the New York media and putting on the show that he's he's never did that in, in Wisconsin. He was uh, to himself. Uh, I'm chilling. I'm I'm, I'm I'm a serial killer. I'm, I'm, I'm you know. <laughs> Let's uh, go to the black hole. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. I'm just gonna do what I gotta do. But the Jets. This is a whole – New York is a whole different world. It's two places yeah. – it's two or three places that you play, and if you don't perform, they don't care who you are. So he know when he right. go with the Jets, he's got to build a bond with the coaching staff. He's got to build a bond with the players. Yep. Because they're going in there with that Finnick attitude, that ain't going to work in New York. You know. So, so you're saying – if I'm hearing you correct, you're saying out of the entire – Schedule entire 17 games. You're saying the first two games are the most important. The, the games. Most important. You can't get behind because look, you okay, you 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 lose either one of these games. Your rebound game is Arizona. 
Okay, yeah, fine. Arizona's in a tailspin right now. They're trying to see if their quarterback can lead them. Uh, he's just another guy that got the money. Uh, right. New England, that, that ain't nothing going to be easy about that. New England get pumped up for the Cowboys. That's one of the few teams that New England say, you know, we're not, quote, quote, bigger than. So they, And then you got San Francisco, bro. Then you got Herbert. Uh, uh, for, Ooh, for, for the, yeah, Kellen you got Moore. the Keller Moores coming. This kid gonna, gonna put, finally put a, together a real game plan. Cause he's gonna be like, he I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna show you Yeah. He got a playbook set aside for that week alone, Nate. You know he does. The two easiest games you have one is at the third game, and one is about the sixth game. You'll have a bye after the Chargers, but you'll have the Rams. The two easy games to me is Arizona and the Rams. If you lose to the Giants and the Jets, you 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 that mean you're gonna be hurt. Yeah, I mean physically, and you're gonna be mentally hurt. Your your confidence ain't gonna be as high, you right. know. And New in e- and Arizona, you may get it up just a little bit, but New England ain't coming in here playing, man. You can't be hold on one, two, three, four, five, six. You got six games before the bye. You can't be three and three. You can't be okay. you 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 want to be four and two so, at the worst. You want to be four so I, and two at the worst. I'm I have a little bit different look uh, outlook on this, Nate. Okay, I believe I do believe I agree with you. The first game, New York, has to be a victory. I think New York has to be a victory. You can't lose the first game of your season. You just can't. But if I had to put my finger on another must-have game. I put my finger on another must-have game, Nate. I am going to say San Francisco. Mm. This is really a toss between San Francisco and Buffalo. The reason why I say San Francisco is because San Francisco owns you right now. Okay. San Francisco owns you. So in terms of your development and your outlook as a competitor, you could not go the rest of your season knowing and fearing one team because they take care of business every time they see you. Every time they see you, they beat you up. Um, I think they have to win that game against the 49ers for that reason. You, I just think you have to come out the gate. You got your head coach now, three years later, being the offensive coordinator, which I needed him to be the offensive coordinator from day one. But now, three years later, he is the offensive coordinator. Uh, they have addressed the issue that was uh, not the issue that me and you wanted to address. That was the offensive line. But they addressed the defense, the middle of the defense. Uh, they addressed uh, the tight end position uh, better than I think it ever been addressed in the last four or five years. So uh, we have a running back. Uh, the five offensive linemen that they have up there now uh, and still uh, – uh, the right guard, uh, all world, Zach Martin, uh, uh, Biotish, the center, uh, Tyler Smith, the left guard, and, and Tyron Smith until he, you know, as long as he lasts at the left right. tackle. Correct. So that that is a solid offensive line. I don't think Correct. it's a great offensive line because it hasn't played together in fire, but I think it's a good offensive line, and they should be able to do some things with the adding okay. of the tight end. Uh, so – but right. if they better have it Before, together against New York and the Jets. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> when you look at this, Nate, before we get up out of here, what's the one thing that stands out most about this schedule? I have mine, but I want to see if, you, if you're just looking at the same thing well, I'm looking at. One thing what that I have the most, most that bothers me the most about okay. this schedule is Talk Philadelphia. No, oh. That's what bothers me the most. Philadelphia oh. – is it, it, when I think if this kid from Georgia comes in with the right state of mind, Ooh, big Carter, yeah, uh, they 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 back in the race, they back in the hunt. Uh, they have the money. They signed their quarterback. They have the money to still go out and get those one uh, one year. I uh, call, call them game stoppers, like they did with uh, Sue last year. They got the ability to go out and get a one a one year game stopper. You know, hey, they don't need nobody else. They got Carter. No, I'm just saying, Davis, offensively, Fletcher Cox. if they need somebody offensively or defensively, they still have enough flexibility with their cap to go out and get that one year game stopper. Dallas needs to go get <clears throat> Indominus Sue. That's what they need to go to get. They need to go get that insurance policy. I, I'm just saying, you ask me my yeah. problem. All right, my problem, problem is Philadelphia, right. not once, but twice. 
twice. Yeah. Every year. Every okay. year. All right. I don't disagree with you that that's a problem, but that is not my biggest problem with this particular schedule. My biggest problem with this particular schedule is week seven, Nate. Mm, okay. What happens at week that's seven? That's the bye week. That's the bye week. So you're saying you only play six games before your bye. Right. And then you have to go on an 11-game stretch. But we have the Thanksgiving game. That's going to give you some time. It's going to give you some time. Let me say, oh, no, you Nate. don't. Oh, let's say Thanksgiving third. Oh, you're you, you, you going to play right after that. Nah, you're right. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no time to breathe, bro. Ain't no time. We should have got that bye round about the 10th. Bro, game. 11 straight games. Your 11 straight games. Wow. In that in that eleven game stretch, you're playing against the Philadelphia Eagles twice, Washington Commanders twice, the Giants once, the Panthers, Seattle, Buffalo, Miami, Detroit. And what does all of these have in common? Playoff teams. Defense. Now, not just playoff experience. They have defense. That means our defense has to come to play. Every week to give that ball back to Dak and party so that they can have as many opportunities as they can to beat these tight teams. These are run. These are run. uh, Every team we're facing is a run first team. No, not when you get down to that. Not when you get down to that Buffalo and Miami. Oh, no. They they quarterback going to take off and run. (laughs) He ain't showed me. When when the game get on the line, he ain't going to run. let them boys oh. run that ball. He going to take Nick, off We didn't run. talk about this. How do I not see this? Week 15. What, that, that's Miami? Buffalo. What's the matchup of that week? I don't know. Buffalo is, they, they quarterback. Diggs versus Diggs. Oh, you talking about brother on brother? Oh man, that, that I almost forgot that myself. I talked about it yesterday. Oh shoot! Wow, that's a conversation for another day. God yeah. dog, that's that's a conversation that for another be... day. That's next Woo! week. That's next week. Let's right. yeah, but that's that's All next right. week. We're gonna talk about that. Put that Put on that the on mark. The Anyways, hey. Yeah. In a synopsis, y'all, Big Nate Dawes says week one and two are absolute must-haves. I, Isaiah says number one and number five are must-haves. And I say Nate Dog said Philly is the big bad wolf out there in terms of the schedule. I'm saying that week seven bye is a little bit too early, Miss Pearly. Okay, that's yeah. you gotta early. <laughs> <laughs> too wow. early, Miss Pearly. But y'all. We need y'all to tune in. Continue to check us out. God, dog, this schedule sucks. I don't know. So Der- Double J pissed somebody off, Nate. I don't know who it was, but somebody in the yeah. front office said, you know what, Double J, <laughs> this ain't the year for you. We'll see y'all next time on another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Your boy Isaiah, your boy Nate, dog, we'll holla at you. Gone. Thank you, Niagara. <laughs>